Hello, hello everybody, what is up? My name is Anaris, and today we're here watching game number two from the Best of Three Match Series featuring Hannibal Prime, this time the Terran in the top left position, against his Red Protoss opponent, SeedSG, in the top right. Now, this is going to be a fight taking place on the map GSL Crevasse, which is my favorite map right now. Seriously, if you want to get on my good side, then you can actually take me out for um, Chinese food on GSL Crevasse. I don't know. But seriously, though, this is an awesome map, and it happens to be the one that Seed SG picked. Now, judging by his strategy in game number one, opting for, uh, hold on, spoiler alert, flashy noises, wait, flashy, wait, that didn't even make sense, flashy noises, okay, you've been warned, spoiler alert, uh, game number one, we did see Seed SG going for that fast expansion, and, you know, he really didn't have Colossi to follow up dealing with the Marines or anything like that. His expansion went down pretty uh, pretty easily, so, you know, CDSG, we've seen so far, it likes those expansions, may decide to go with that again. Like I said, this is the map he picked, and I'm thinking it's because of the fact the expansion over here is very easy to defend. It is, is accessible only through the main base and a little cliff area right here which can be harassed by Reapers, and that's about it, at least until you get into the mid to the late game, where you do have various other types of units flying around. And by that time, CD oh, excuse me, CDSG should have plenty of opportunity to get some defenses up for this expansion. Sure enough, we are seeing the Nexus go down here. Now, notice the only real thing, the only real catch about this expansion, sure, it's easy to defend, but you've only got six mineral patches. So you kind of have to adjust your build accordingly, not going to be that huge of an impact, but still, it's an impact nonetheless. Now, here comes the Protoss player, CDSG, going to be scouting out the Terran base to see exactly what's going on. Number one, is he running on two geysers right now? That was one of the things that the Protoss player couldn't get into the base last game and find out, and would have helped him to have that information. Uh, number two, what's he doing with his barracks? Is he going to build... Uh what kind of add-on? Well, it looks like he popped out a bit too late as the Marine came out of the barracks just in time to drive that probe away. Protoss realized, you know what, that barracks is flashing. I know it's I'm all, my time of scouting is limited, so I'm just going to go ahead and get out of here. And there's that lag again. God, I really hate that. And we see he's actually supply blocked. Wah, wah. Okay, there we go. Popping out that gate where that uh, pylon just a second there. Looking pretty good overall so far. We can probably expect to see a cybernetic score as he's sitting at about 200 minerals or so right now. There we go. Expansion over here is even looking pretty darn good. Now, one thing I do want to point out, you see in his main base, he's dropped one geyser. All right, so that's fine. Terran's going to come over here and scout that. But over here, he has the second geyser, and this is a rich Vespine geyser. So he will be collecting at a higher rate. The Terran, unless he comes up here and scouts this, won't know that. But he's probably thinking, all right, I see a cybernetic score just about done, and it's almost at the five minute mark. Something's up. Something had to be going on. Where did those minerals go that he had to get that thing popped out at almost the five minute mark? So you see the Zealot's going to be giving pursuit right now. And again, you know, Stalker would be a better choice, but obviously not an option at this point. So sure enough, Terran's like, oh, hey, check it out. Just like game number one, there's an expansion here. This expansion was dropped a little bit earlier in game number uh, game number two than the previous one, but still, nonetheless, same effect. Going to be able to have that improved economy. The question is whether or not Seed SG is going to be able to field the appropriate units to deal with whatever the Terran player throws at him to counter the fast expansion. Now we look right now, and we see, all right, he's got the factory. He's got uh, the tech lab getting that STEM upgrade. That's pretty typical. Got to be able to have that for the Marines. Don't want them running around. And judging by the build so far, it's looking like we're going to see something very similar to what we saw in game number one, which was a 1-1-1 build. Now, the difference is, I think the barracks in the first game went down after the starport went down, which obviously is not the case this time, but still the same effect in the end. It might decide to go ahead and flip off the start or the uh, the factory with one of the barracks here to get some marines. You see, he's got one tech labs again. We'll keep an eye on him to see exactly what he's going to be doing. In the meantime, he did rec recycle that bunker once he realized, all right, I'm probably not going to be facing an attack from the Protoss anytime soon. I can use that money somewhere else and put it to a better cause. And one of the better causes right now, it looks like, is going to be a medevac. 
Now I want to point out, while this is going on, he's sitting on a decent bit of money right now. So he's going to be thinking of something to do with this. Most likely dumping in a few Marines, maybe a Siege Tank, and Siege Tech. Sure enough, there we go. All the money has disappeared. Looking at CDSG's base, we see he is going with uh, actually a slight modification to his build from game number one. Going ahead and getting that gas, all right, that's fine and dandy. But notice he only built two additional gateways, and he got a robotics bay. Now, like I said before, this is likely just him as a direct result of learning a playstyle of his opponent in game number one. All right, what did I fall prey to, Marines? Well, what would be a great mid-game counter for that? Colossi! So we can expect to see him get at least a couple of those here, as he's already got that Observer. Pretty good timing on that. See, it's just kind of parked around right there. Now, the Protoss player did have a Stalker right here at the Watchtower, which gave him vision of the fact that those rocks were being destroyed. So he is aware of the fact that something is going to be coming in his base pretty soon, and it's likely going to be, you know, Marines, judging by the rate of, uh, rate of damage given to that set of rocks. Also, CDSG has another Observer in the Terran base right now, so he sees, all right, well, you know, it's looking like he did last game, probably going to have a drop. He's got his units positioned accordingly right there in the mineral line of his expansion, where he's most likely to be attacked. He figures the Terran is going to think this is going to be the Protoss weak spot. Nope, not so much. Right now, you can actually see the main area, or the main entrance for the Protoss base, not so guarded right now. He's got a couple Zealots. Also, one Colossi has finished. Second one's on the way. And notice he's also Kurna boosting them out. He's worried about an attack coming here very soon which was indicated by the Observer, which I think is floating around somewhere. I'm not exactly sure where, but there is one right over here. And that is going to give the Protoss vision of what's going on down here below his base. Sure enough, I'm sure he is so happy the fact that he got out that Colossi. Second one's on the way, and also he's currently boosting out that extended Thermal Lance. That will be critical in dealing with the attack. You really need that extra three range on the Colossi. Oh, looks like a couple Zealots taking a Siege Tank shot there. So now force fields have gone down. It's going to delay the attack for a little while, but obviously not forever. So the Terran's thinking, all right, this is pretty much, uh, I've got a lot invested into this. I'm one base right now. I've got to make this work because the Protoss is sitting comfortably with that expansion. Look at the Colossi right there doing a ton of damage to those Marines. Marines actually running back for more. Oh, wow. Four Marines just charred remains there. They really, wow, that was just, that was an attack. That's all I can say about that right now. So Hannibal Prime actually trying to move up and establish a nice little position. Siege tanks are quite bunched up, though. You see the Marines are as well. And with the inclusion of the two Colossi, despite the fact that the siege tanks are trying to take them down, it looks like both of them are going to survive and annihilate the Terran onslaught. Look at that. Even the Medivac's taken out all but one. Woo. And now at this point, you look and see, yep, sure enough, there's the GG. Terran realizing, all right, Protoss is just in way too good of a position right now. I can't do anything about this. GG. So, all right, we're now one and one. Let's go on to the final round and see who's going to proceed to fight in the quarterfinals.